Hi there, MTAs here from jobreadyprogrammer.com. I want to talk to you about how to keep your skills sharp as a developer. Because believe it or not, coding is a very ephemeral skill, meaning you can you can lose it if you don't keep practicing or or trying to grow it. Okay? It's kind of like going to the gym and trying to build muscle. If you stop for a period of time, you will lose your gains and, and strength. So you have to kind of keep working at it, okay? And what happens in the practical workplace as a software developer is that you may get put on a project that uh, gets you busy on certain things, right? And those things may not challenge your coding skills or improve your logic abilities, okay? Perhaps you may have to learn a new uh, service in Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure. Now that could be productive, but it's not gonna improve your logic or coding skills. Or for example, you may have to switch out a framework that requires you to move around a lot of boilerplate code, okay? Uh, these kinds of things can take a lot of time and depending on the kind of company you work for, you could be stuck on a project where you don't get to practice your coding skills for months, okay? And during these times, I bet you your coding skills will suffer if you're not practicing on the side. But it won't be a big deal. If you've been coding a while, uh, you should be able to sharpen up fairly quickly uh, as a senior developer. However, I've seen developers that worked for the same company for 10 years, uh, where after developing the initial code base, they developed the initial project. They sticked around in a support role, okay? Um, supporting the product for years and eventually got too comfortable, okay? And this could, this, this could be a very dangerous uh, position to be in as a programmer because your growth will stop in the technical path, your, gro your growth will stop. If you stick around too long, you may find it difficult to transition to a new role at that point, unless you of course had been coding on the side and working on personal projects and that sort of thing. Um, so what's, what's the best way to keep your coding skills sharp? Well, it's all about consistently training your programming logic. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, programming, um, programming logic at its core comes from the fundamental building blocks of any programming language, right? Such as loops, if-else statements, recursion, method level coding, and exception handling, really. Uh, these are granular components, um, uh, seem pretty basic, but they need to be practiced constantly. You can learn all the frameworks and design patterns in the world, but if you have a functionality you're trying to implement, in a, in a product and you're having trouble trying to figure out whether this given loop will have an array out of bounds error, okay? Or, or, or an off by one error and you're stuck in something that basic like that, um, you won't be able to focus on the larger picture because your mind is so overoccupied with the granular stuff, okay? So your goal ideally should really be to get to a point where your mind is focused on the larger picture of the project um, and the granular components you could just think through in your head and your fingers will do all the work. Now senior developers that get really good at coding, that's really what happens. Your fingers start doing most of the work, at least the granular stuff. So let's get a little bit more specific about the kinds of problems that will improve your coding logic fairly quickly um, even if you haven't coded for a while. Um, I've actually got two, uh, a few of the uh, courses on this topic, but here's an example. I'm gonna show you a video now that goes over a coding example from one of my courses. Uh, so here it says we have two variables, F, R, and, and D, all right? And so if, you, if I scroll down, that's these guys right here, F, R, and D. So notice F, R is a list of strings, and D is a dictionary of strings, all right? We have the key, and then we have the value, key, value, and so on. So what is it saying? FR is a list of strings. D is a dictionary with email addresses as keys and numbers as values, numbers in string format, as we saw. Write code to replace the email address in each of the strings in the FR list with the associated value of that email looked up from the dictionary D. So what is it saying? Basically, it's saying that in the FR list of strings, we've got email addresses. And that those are right here. This email, this email, uh, these are all emails, right? This first piece of each of these strings is, is an email address. And it's saying that we need to look up uh, this email in this dictionary. And if we find it, 
we need to replace it with with the value. So for example, this seven at comp one dot com, this email does exist in the dictionary, which is right here. So I need to replace in fr, I need to replace this email with the actual value that's associated with that email, which is right here, right? So 199 is actually supposed to go in fr. And then for uh, this as well, uh, this is the same email being repeated. So this would also have 199. Now for 13 at comp1.com, that's down here. Uh, this has the value 205. So for that, it would have a 205 here, all right? Uh, and then this is an email that does not exist in the D uh, in the dictionary. Uh, so we'll go over what, what we need to do there. So hopefully you understand what we're trying to do here. So let's scroll back up and, and complete the rest of uh, the instructions. So again, it's saying um, write code to replace the email address in each of the strings in the FR list with the associated value of that email looked up from the dictionary D. All right, that's what we just discussed. Now, if the dictionary does not contain the email found in the list, add a new entry in the dictionary for the email found in the FR list. So meaning, if we scroll down, um, this 26 at comp1.com, this email does not exist in the dictionary. So we don't have anything to look up. So it's asking us to actually, if, in this case, when we come across this particular email and we try to look up in the dictionary and we don't find it, we actually need to add this email uh, to the dictionary, okay? As a, as a, as a fourth item uh, in this dictionary. And so for the value for that email, I actually discuss what we need to put there. Uh, let's scroll back up. Uh, the value for this email, the value for this new email key will be the next highest value number in the dictionary in string format. So this particular email that we did not find in the dictionary, we need to first of all add it to the dictionary and then add the next highest value, uh, the numeric value as the, as the value for that key. 206 because 205 is the largest number so this email will be added to this dictionary with 206 as the new value uh, for that all right now when we do that what i also want you to do is after you add that new value to the dictionary i'd like you to add that 206 back up here replace this e email address with the number 206 okay just like we're doing with the rest of of the uh, emails here all right and that's what, what I discussed doing. Once the dictionary is populated with the new email key, add a new number value, replace that email's occurrence in the FR list with the number value. Meaning, so once we uh, see that, okay, this email does not exist in this dictionary, uh, we have to, first of all, add it as the key, and the value we give it is a new number, and then that number needs to be added back to this FR, right? We have to replace this email with that 206. All right. So essentially, at the end, when we uh, run our code, uh, we will only see numbers here, right, in the FR list. We'll only see numbers, and uh, and those numbers will be, of course, coming from the dictionary down here. And this dictionary will have this new email added to it. Okay. So take your time to really understand this problem. What you need to do. Most of uh, the effort required in programming is really trying to understand the problem. I can't tell you how many times uh, people just start writing the lines of code and they don't fully understand the requirement and they start typing code and then they get stuck in the middle and they're like, oh, wait, I had to do this, I had to do that. So here uh, it says the output of running your completed code should be the following. And now you can see that for the FR, value of FR uh, contains the numbers, right? 199, 199, 205, and those are the uh, numbers for this email, this email, and this email, looked up from the dictionary, 199, 200, and then it also contains the number 206. Where did this 206 come from? Well, 206 is the next highest value from the dictionary. So what needs to be done is we need to add this, dic this email in the dictionary first, with the new value 206, and then once we do that, we look up the 206 and we replace it, we replace this email with the 206, all right? So that video is actually one of my assignments from my Python course. Hopefully, you were able to get an idea of the kinds of problems that will target key areas of your programming logic and make you a better programmer. 
programming challenges like these uh, keep you sharp and interview ready at all times. And, and they're actually fun to work with. Um, if you've taken my courses, hopefully you had fun doing those assignments. Uh, but anyway, with that being said, I'd like to wrap up and uh, I just want to let you know that stay sharp, remain a dangerous programmer, keep coding, and make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.